Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to the second edition of the World Climate News. For years, numerous climate scientists have been debating how strong the man-made temperature increase actually was and will be. The central question is how warm was it in the past before industrialization on Earth? Does the temperature curve look anything like this or were there actually historical warm periods that were just as warm or even warmer than today? This question, which initially sounds so simple but is in fact quite complex, can be approached in two ways. The first is a theoretical approach. That means in plain language, one tries to gain as much historical data about past temperatures as possible. Afterwards, the unfortunately very inaccurate data is processed to a climate model with the help of computer programs. Due to numerous problems with data and unclean or possibly even manipulated methods, climate scientists generated the famous hockey stick. To refute this scientifically is not at all easy and above all not easily understandable for most people. The average Joe, who recently started paying $4 for a gallon of gasoline, has neither the time nor the inclination to deal with the numerous temperature reconstructions. He simply wants to know, are the rising temperatures a new phenomenon? That is, probably man-made? Or was it already this warm in the past? This is what makes the second approach so interesting. Because there are numerous paleoclimatologists who deal with the temperatures thousands of years ago and who can credibly prove, yes, it was once this warm. One of these scientists is Swiss professor emeritus at the University of Bern, Christian Schlüchter, who is a geologist by training, but his decades of work also touched on climate science. Schlüchter mainly researches on glaciers in the so-called Quaternary Epoch, that is, the last 2.6 million years. Since the expansion and retreat of glaciers are significantly influenced by temperature, they are considered the most important evidence of climate in the past. But first, let's take a look at the present and the development of glaciers over the last 150 years. Here, numerous climate researchers and environmental activists are sounding the alarm. Because if you look at the size and extent of the alpine glaciers, for example, you will see a drastic decline in ice. Some sources speak of declines of up to 60% within a few decades. So global warming is acute, and it stands to reason humans with their greenhouse gases are responsible for the glacier's retreat. Or are they? In order to properly classify the present-day retreat of glaciers, one must compare the current period with the past periods. To do this, one must first look at the different epochs within the Quaternary. The period is divided into the so-called Pleistocene and the Holocene. The Holocene also has another name that is easier to remember, the post-glacial. This is because it gradually became warmer around 12,000 years ago. To get a rough idea, we are at the end of the Paleolithic Age, when hunter-gatherers hunted the big game of cold Europe. Due to rising temperatures, European Stone Age people had to reorient themselves and instead hunted in the newly created forests. The Holocene is also divided into different phases ranging from the so-called pre-boreal to the boreal and the Atlantic to the sub-Atlantic. Schlüchter noticed decades ago that trade trunks can be found beneath numerous retreating glaciers. These are either washed out from under the glacier's ice sheet with enormous force of the water, or the melting glaciers reveal the tree trunks. What makes these tree trunks so special now? It's the age. Schlüchter, who had determined the age of the logs using C14 radiocarbon dating, was able to prove the tree trunks were up to 10,000 years old and while trapped under the eternal ice of the glacier, survived the millennia. Around 8,000 years before Christ, we are on the Boreal, the temperature curve rose rapidly. As a result, numerous plants spread in formerly barren Europe, while the animal world also became more diverse and populated newly emerging forests. There we have the key because somehow the trees must have made it under the glacier. As is so often the case, the simplest solution is the right one. About 10,000 years ago, it was so warm, there were no glaciers at this location, and the trees with diameters of up to 80 centimeters were able to grow for centuries. Exactly until the next cold phase occurred, when the trees died and were covered and encased by the expanding glacier. Over the years, Schlüchter has been able to discover tree finds of most varied ages. Schlüchter's finds range from 8000 BC to 2000 BC, 
Thus, several times during the Holocene, it was significantly warmer than it is today. As a reminder, the tree line in the Alps is currently about 5,900 to 6,500 feet. Above that, no trees are found. The tree line at different times during the Holocene was up to 1,000 feet higher, as could be proven by the findings, which corresponds to a difference in the average temperature of plus almost 2 degrees. These warm phases are estimated to have lasted several hundred years, otherwise the trees would have not grown so tall. Such classical temperature models can be disproved on the basis of Schlüchter's tree findings. Of course, this doesn't explicitly prove to average Joe that there is no man-made climate change, but one can simply prove to him that in numerous epochs within the last 12,000 years it was significantly warmer than today. And the retreat of the glaciers with increasing annual average temperatures is an old and at the same time natural phenomenon. If you enjoyed this video, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support our channel, information for donation can be found in the video description box down below. See you again next time!